through and going through and going through, and you never get through. It's like you're going on a long distance trip somewhere, and it seems like you're just never getting there. Mile after mile, hour after hour keeps going by. It's like, when am I going to get there? Most likely, the reason we're going through and not getting through is because of unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is the number one reason we get stuck in life. And, And as long as we hold on to unforgiveness, we don't just get stuck, we start going under. We start digging a ditch. We start getting pulled down. Things start getting ugly. We start getting miserable. So I was tired of weighing too much, having too much weight. I was overweight, at least 30, 40 pounds. Year after year, I would try a diet, fail, you know, work real hard, work out, then get inconsistent. I just never lose that weight. Finally, 2020, I said, you know what? Enough is enough. I'm going to lose this weight. So I started this program called Noom. And basically within two months, I had lost 30 pounds. I stuck to 1,400 calories a day. I ate only healthy food. I exercised hard. And then after that, over time, it became a lifestyle. And so now, all these years later, I've been basically able to maintain my weight. How? It's pretty simple. When I feel the weight get heavy, I know I've gained too much weight. You can feel it, right? If you're gaining weight, if you've eaten too much, you feel it. So when I feel the weight coming on, what do I do? I take a break from eating. I may skip a meal or reduce my amount of eating to very minimum. Then I work out even extra hard to drop some of that by burning calories. That's my secret to maintaining my weight loss. It's not so much what I eat per se, even though that's part of it, but it's more about how much I eat, when I eat. And so by maintaining my weight, I feel good. I don't want to ever go back to the weight that I once had because I feel young again. I feel light. I'm able to do a lot. But there is a weight that I can never just take off on my own. And that weight is sin. And no matter how much I try to stop sinning before Christ, I couldn't. How do I know Christ is real? Because when I stop, try to stop sinning, He gave me the power to do so. You want to know Jesus is real or not? That's how you know he's real. You might not see him, but you see the effects of his life. Suddenly, now that I'm believing Jesus is in my life and that he has set me free, and he's given me power over sin, I am overcoming sin. The weight of sin starts coming off. So I was thinking today about the testimony. I was thinking that. We all could testify about coming out of sin. Hello. Anybody not have that testimony? We all have that testimony. So I was thinking, well, how about we go get somebody that has really sinned? Well, that's everyone too. I mean, really sinned, like went way down deep and had a hard time digging out of it. Somebody who struggled holding on to unforgiveness. And so the person that came to my mind, I even asked Pastor Steve, who do you think? He gave me the same person. So he bared witness that the person, the perfect poster boy for coming out of deep sin, even though it's all deep sin, is Joe DiMaglio. So welcome Joe DiMaglio as he testifies. Love you too, bro. Still not on? There we go. Okay. Be as quick as I can. Um, thank you. <laughs> you, you said it, brother. <laughs> uh, good morning, church. Uh, forgiveness in general involves an intentional decision to let go of resentment, anger, 
were acts that have hurt or offended me. First of all, I had to find out what resentment was. And uh, I, I had a book called The Golden Book of Resentments. And uh, it talked about the word resentment is a Latin word, which means to refill. And, and that's what we do. When we have a resentment and unforgiveness in our heart, we refill that situation just like the day it first happened. We keep refilling that over and over again. And um, it's kind of, when I, when I was thinking about all this, it, it was like, <laughs> it's when I harbor resentment that it turns into anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, like a ship moored in a harbor. It's not going anywhere. So when God puts his finger on a certain area of your life, like unforgiveness, you're not moving forward until you deal with that. You're going to be stuck. I can remember I was at a prayer meeting one time, and uh, I was uh, sharing about how I felt stuck, like I had hit a plateau, and I couldn't seem to move forward. And Jane Teeny, who at, at that time was over inner healing, came to me after the meeting and said, Joe, would you uh, consider going through inner healing? Now, inner healing at that time was praise's best kept secret. And uh, nobody knew that much about it. And so I went through it with inner healing with two women, which was difficult in and of itself. <laughs> and <laughs> But um, it was good for me. I can't tell you the freedom that came over me after that. It was just amazing to me. And um, unforgiveness is like drinking poison, hoping the other guy dies. That, that's exactly what it's like. And uh, so I had, to, I had my brother. Me and him really never got along real well. We always bumped heads. He thought one way, I thought another way. He said right, I said left. And it's just the way it was. But then I had a major falling out. He was, I had him working for me and had a major falling out with him. And right away, I got resentment, bitterness, and unforgiveness. Now I got to deal with it. So I'm riding through Ocean City one day and I see him on, on, on a job with another guy. And uh, so I, I started going around the block because I didn't have the courage to go talk to my brother. So I kept going around the block praying that God would give me the courage to go speak to my brother. And he did. And uh, I got no regrets concerning that. And uh, it, it was the beginning of a relationship with my brother. For the first time, we had a, a relationship that was workable. And uh, because of that, I ended up able to lead my brother to the Lord. And uh, he got baptized here at this church right, be right before he passed away. And um, so, you know, God's never failed me in the sense that I knew I wasn't just like he said, that weight is when it's on you, it's on you. And you ain't getting up and moving forward until you deal with it. So I had to, I had to learn to be quick in making my amends. I really did. I couldn't let him linger. Because it, once a root of bitterness comes in, it's, it's hard to deal with. It really is. And, uh, and I've, been, I've been stuck more than once <laughs> with things that I had to deal with. Do you know what I mean? And, uh, but I'm going to tell you, last night at midnight, um, I don't know, the Lord woke, woke me up a little bit after midnight. He does that a lot with me. Uh, I'm usually in bed by 7.30 because I know I'm only going to sleep until 12 or 1. And, uh, <clears throat> but what came over me was a song. And I'm not much of a singer, so I'm just going to quote the words. And it's really what happens to me when I deal with those things of unforgiveness. It says that mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me at Calvary. And that's exactly what happens when we, bring, when, when we claim the shed blood of Jesus Christ over our lives, things change. 
there's power in the blood of Jesus. And uh, so it's like, I got a good life today. I really do. I've, I've made amends with my, all my family, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, who don't even really know me yet. But like, I have a relationship with them. Do you know what I mean? And I have a, a relationship with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's like the most important relationship in my life. And because uh, I couldn't, I, you know, I was a drug addict my whole life. And I, I couldn't, I couldn't get sober. And I was, I didn't think, and when I was drinking and drugging, I didn't have any resentments. You know why? Because when I had a resentment, we was dealing with it right then and there in the street. <laughs> and that was usually in a fight. And then after the fight was done, we were friends. That's just the way it was back then. And, uh, but I got a good life today, and I thank God for all he's done and continues to do in my life. And uh, that's it. Thank you. So good. Oh, I just want to say one more thing. In, in making your amends, you really have to know what your part was in that whole situation. Because you're clean, when you're making your amends, you're cleaning your side of the street, not the other person's. His side of the street don't come up, but you just keep it on you. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. One of the things that Joe was saying was in describing when he was dealing with his brother and dealing with other people, the words resentment, the words bitterness, the words unforgiveness, all these things deal, are all about feelings. And that's really the difficulty that we have of getting through what we're going through. It's, it's our feelings that get in the way. But we got to understand that forgiveness is not a feeling. Get that in our hearts. Forgiveness is not a feeling. God is supernatural. And everything he gives us is supernatural. Naturally, we don't have it in us to forgive certain acts. And our feelings will never feel like we've forgiven anyone. That's why by faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The substance is supernatural. Forgiveness is a supernatural substance of our faith in God. I don't forgive you because I feel like forgiving you. I forgive you with the power that I've been given by faith in Jesus Christ. That's how we forgive the unforgivable. That's how we forgive those inner issues that keep us up and cause us to try to pull us back with feelings. I stand against my feelings with faith. How do we get through what we're going through? By faith, not feelings. Yes, we've learned throughout these psalms that we own up to our feelings. We're honest with God about our feelings. But by faith, I get through this. By faith. And so supernaturally, forgiveness is an act of faith. If we have faith in God, that same faith in God gives me the power to forgive someone supernaturally. The same go together. My faith in God and my ability to forgive someone else are the same. I don't have to wait for a feeling to come. Amen. When I feel like it, I'll forgive you. When the bitterness leaves, I'll forgive you. When I've gotten over it, I'll forget. What if we never get over it? What if we never feel like it? Then what? What if the damage is so deep that the, and the scar so you know, we have scars that you can see on the outside. Some go deep in the inside that only a doctor can get to. Amen. And that doctor is Jesus, and he's the only one that can free us from the harm that's been done to us. Amen? Amen. So let's get into Psalm 32. Because how do you know you've really been forgiven? How do you really know that you've been forgiven? Because suddenly, just like when I did my weight loss program, I lost weight. That's how I knew. I was lighter. But the heaviness, there's automatically a heaviness because of the burden of sin. 
And so when the heaviness comes off, it's like this weight, like Joe said, comes off. There's a freedom. Freedom and forgiveness go together. Amen. You know when you're free. If you've been a slave to something and you come out of it, you'll know it. Because you're not giving into it anymore. That's how we know. Are we free? Are we truly free? The Bible says whom the sun sets free is what? And the truth shall set us free. So we're on this process that Romans 12, 2 describes as the renewing of the mind. We're being transformed so we can know the perfect will of God. And in that process of transformation and knowing God's will, as we're knowing God's word, we're knowing God's will, and as we're doing that, we're also able to see now the lies, confess them, and get free through his truth. So when we first got saved, we received forgiveness. We understood the lie that we were bound in sin. Now we received Jesus, that we're free from sin. And we accepted it, and we were saved. We were born again. But now it's a process continually as we get into the truth of now light shining on darkness, exposing dark things, lies in our life, and us now replacing with true truth so more of those shackles come off. We might have one shackle off, but we need the other shackle off. We need all shackles off to be completely free. I don't know about you, but there's one thing I desire more than anything else as a pastor, I know as Pastor Steve's, is to see each and every one of you free. Amen. If I was in the times of slavery, and I was on the Underground Railroad and helping people get free, I would want to see everyone free. I wouldn't want to see anyone left behind. I would go back and go back after one after the other until everyone came north and found freedom. Many people died to find freedom. Amen. We are all bound and slaves to sin unless we've allowed Jesus to set us free. And so forgiveness is not a one-time deal. It is continual. It is a lifetime in this age God is doing a work in us. And so it's daily, Lord, search my heart. Every day we're to go to our doctor, God, and ask him to search us and see if there's anything wrong in us. And there's a quick and easy way to know when we're in sin, when we have unfairness in our life, and it's this, 32 verse 1. Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven whose sin is put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt. It's the joy factor. If we have joy, it's because we are free. If we don't have joy, it's because we're bound. If we are Christians and are lacking joy, we are still stuck in our sin. The fruit of being free of sin is the fruit of joy. So if we're a Christian and still miserable, it's because we have sin in our life unconfessed, unforgiveness in our life. Jesus did all that he needed to do on the cross, but we haven't fully accepted it. We're holding on to things. We haven't fully let go. And because of that, we're Christians, but yet we're not free. We haven't really experienced the fullness of the resurrection power of Jesus in our life. Because we have to confess our sins. Jesus gave power over sin. He took our sin on the cross. And our only responsibility to fully accept what he did is to confess our sins. When we confess it out of our mouth, we get free of it. When I refuse to confess my sin, verse 3, my body wasted away. How many of you can relate to that when we've hold, held on to sin and unforgiveness in our life? Our body just wastes away. I groaned all day long, night and day. Your hand of discipline was heavy on me. See, God has a way of spanking us. Life spanks us. When we're not right with God, he'll let life spank us. 
Some of us wake up every day and are just getting spanked all the day long. Whipped, beat down, beat up. Because that is the life of living in unforgiveness. You're constantly being whipped by God. Spanked. Like a child that needs discipline constantly. We are that kind of child. We became, yes, children of God by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. But if we hold on to unforgiveness in our life, we're continuously being disciplined by God. Like a constant spanking. Anybody want to live in that place? I think these were the kind of messages Jonathan Edwards preached in the Northeast during the awakening. But it caused an awakening. Do we realize that if we live in unforgiveness, we are literally being spanked all day long by God? That's the reality of it. How many of you, I know spanking is not a thing anymore, per se, but how many of you know what it's like to get spanked? God has a way of spanking us. He don't have to do anything. Life spanks us. When we're not walking with God, how do we know we're walking with God? In his presence is what? The fullness of joy. So when we're lacking joy, we're not in his presence. I don't want to, I'm not going to let anybody, you know, I had this illustration in my mind. So let's just say I'm a, I'm a thief and a robber. I'm just going about my business. You know, thieves and robbers can be real good. And they know how to really sneak it, you know. So I come up to Dr. Redeen and I'm just talking to her real nicely, but, you know, I, I steal her purse while she's not looking. <laughs> now, Dr. Redeen's going to take this cane and, if, <laughs> and she's going to smack me and get her purse back. But many of us are allowing any old kind of person to come, of, come to us and steal our joy. Make us angry. Make us bitter. I don't know about you, but for me, I like joy. Amen. For those who have tasted joy, you don't want to lose it. So, I mean, I love all y'all, but I'm not going to let any of you take my joy. Amen. You can say what you want about me. Talk about me. Do me wrong. Even my wife, even my kids, even the people that are really, really close to me, nobody's going to steal my joy. I'm going to hold on to my joy. And then I'm going to recognize when somebody's trying to take my joy, I know it's really not them, it's the enemy, because we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. So then I know who I'm going to actually take and start knocking. It's not that person, but it's the devil through the word of God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So let's not let anybody take our joy. That joy came with a price. Jesus on that cross so that we can have joy unspeakable and running over, that we can live in this fallen world, yet experience the joy of God that becomes our strength. Amen? Amen. So when we sin, if we sin, because we've been given the Holy Spirit, because we have Holy Spirit, we can overcome sin. So if we do sin, though, we have this word that is so necessary. Confessing our sins is not saying sorry. That's not going to do it. How many of you have had somebody tell you sorry time and time and time again, and they keep doing the same thing? Eventually you think, you know what, I don't think they really mean it. I think they just got caught, so they're saying it in order to get us off their back. Hello? Hello? So what we need to do to get free of sin is not say, I'm sorry, God. It's say, I repent. I turn away from, that's what repentance means, and turn towards. I turn away from the lie and I turn to the truth. And I stand on the truth and I am changed. How do you know you've truly repented? Because you've changed. You don't do the same thing over and over again anymore. It's no longer habitual. You may slip now and then, but it's not a habitual sin. It's not a part of a pattern of who you are. That's repentance. That's what should take place. And it says, finally, and this is David, after months and months of holding on to the sin of what he did with Bathsheba and being behind the murder of Bathsheba's husband, and all this time he didn't confess his sins to God, even though he had a heart after God. He was ashamed. He was embarrassed. 
I mean, that's a dark place to be in when you're responsible for adultery and murder. And it took a prophet coming to him, Nathan, exposing him, that he finally, finally, I confess all my sins to you. And I stopped trying to hide my guilt. Some of us are pretty good pretenders. We pretend pretty well in church. We can put our hands up. We can put our smile on. But the moment we leave, the bitterness comes right back. Anger is right there again. Might see someone here on church Sunday, then I actually pass them by in Walmart totally different countenance. We can learn how to pretend real well, but if somebody's around us enough, they'll, you'll see through that. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord, and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. My goodness, the joy of being free of guilt. No longer being in prison of sin, no longer being a, in a court case that just continues to go on and on. I am guilt-free. Jesus, pardon me. I walked out of the courthouse with my hands straight up. I am free. I am free. I am free indeed. Amen? Reminds me of Joe in the play. <laughs> so what do we do when we have sin and we're feeling conviction? It says here in verse 6, Therefore let all the godly pray to you while there is still time. We can, the, the Holy Spirit's the one that convicts us, not condemns us, but convicts us to draw us back to God. But if we don't give in to that conviction, and time continues, and time continues, the Bible warns us that we can lose that conviction. What was David's prayer? Holy Spirit, don't leave me. We can lose that conviction where we're so numb now and we become so identified in our sin that it's like we're no longer convicted. That's not a good place to be. That they may not drown in the floodwaters of judgment. For you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of victory. See, when we're off path, when we're allowed sin and unforgiveness to come into our life. We've gotten off the path of God. And on any other path in life, there's nothing but brokenness, destruction. We're just damaged goods. We've let the enemy beat us up, beat us down, have his way with us. And yet we come to church on Sunday and think we're on the right path. The path that the Lord is on is a path of protection. It's a path of direction. We're no longer fearful of what's going to happen to us. We're no longer confused about where we're going. When you're walking with God and you're on his fat path, you have divine direction and divine protection. Amen. You just know where you're going. You just know that God's got you. You can be confident. you got your head up. You're going somewhere. God's leading you. It's a good place to be, yet I know a lot of us Christians don't know where we're going, are full of fear. Why? Unconfessed sin and unforgiveness in our life. That's the root of it. we got to deal with this stuff. We can't pretend. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. That's, if the Lord is guiding us, there's a wall put up if we have unforgiveness in our life. But if that wall is down, he's guiding us. I will advise you and watch over you. Do not be like a senseless horse or mule or donkey or fill in the blank. That needs a bit and bridle to keep it under control. Amen. Let Holy Spirit take control. There's no other way. There's nothing more beautiful than having God's joy, than having God's divine protection, and having his direction. Don't let anybody take that from you. It's not worth it. No matter who did what, sometimes our excuse is, they don't deserve my forgiveness. What they did to me doesn't deserve me to, to even address it. That's not a good place to be, because then they'll continue to harm you all the days of your life. And again, it's not about feeling the strength to forgive them, it's about believing that God has given me the power of forgiveness, which is supernatural, to forgive anyone. 
God's love never fails. No matter how far we've gone, no matter how many years we have lived with unforgiveness in our heart. It can, it, it might, it's like somebody being in a position where they couldn't take a shower for a long period of time. Reality is, I, I watch Survivor a lot, and sometimes, you know, one of the rewards of winning is they get to take a shower. A nice shower. It's a lot better than the ocean. A real cold, nice, real water. Cleansing water. But no matter what, how long we've kept dirt and darkness in our life, the moment we step into forgiveness, it comes off. No matter how deep the dirt was, how thick it was on our body, the moment we step into forgiveness, we are washed clean. Many sorrows come to the wicked. Joe talked about the difficult years and months he had when he held on to unforgiveness. We are literally not on the path of the righteous when we have unforgiveness. We are on the path of the wicked. We might believe in Jesus. We might confess him. And, and I'm not saying you lose your salvation. But in this life, we're not on the path of the righteous. We're on the path of the wicked. And so what's happening? It, yeah, it rains on the just and unjust. But boy, it's a lot worse for those who are in the path of the wicked. Many sorrows come to the wicked, but unfailing love surrounds those who trust the Lord. So rejoice in the Lord and be glad, all you who, who obey him. We who are walking with God, who are walking in obedience, there is just so much joy because God is so good. To be free of guilt and shame Amen. is to really be free. And when you're free, you want to celebrate God. It's hard to hold yourself together during worship. It's hard to just be quiet, even if you're a reserved person. Because when God has been so good, you've got to celebrate his goodness. You know where you've come from. You know where you've gone. You know what he's done in your life. You have to let it out because he's been so good. It's easy to evangelize now. Because when God's been that good, how could you not tell people about it? It's joy unspeakable running over. It's so running over that you got to tell everyone around you. Amen. It's like when I first met Lorraine, I fell so in love with her, and I still am even more in love with her. But I had to tell everybody about it. Jesus is so much more, though, when, he's, when you've really experienced his freedom. So it says here, so rejoice in the Lord and be glad, all you who obey him. Shout for joy, all you whose hearts are pure. Amen. Hearts are pure. To have a pure heart. Think about when your heart's been dirty, now to have it pure. To have pure motives. To really love people without lust. To really be at peace with people. To really have joy. To have all these things in you because of forgiveness. If you've not fully experienced God's forgiveness, today is the day. If you have any unconfessed sin and unforgiveness in your life, it's time to get free. Don't leave this place dirty. Amen. Get on the right path. We have the song Stephen and Pastor Steve are going to sing called Forgiven. Amen. It's a powerful song. I encourage you to stand to your feet. This is the charge. If you have unconfessed sin in your life, repent. And the forgiveness of Christ will wash you clean as you are restored to the joy of walking free of guilt and shame. Let's be restored today. Amen. If you are able to stand to your feet, let's worship the Lord with all of our hearts. Uh, before this song, I wanted to uh, address something that um, this whole thing is about forgiveness. And at the first service, I, I did a blanket statement of asking for forgiveness for people who I have offended. A lot of times I'm direct or sarcastic and things like that. But this one, the people who are here, they are here. Um, so I wanted to ask publicly for their forgiveness, one being 
Elder Sue um, for the way that our interaction was the other day. I, I love you, and I'm, I'm sorry that I, I, I spoke in that manner. And the other one being Lori Holman. Um, I just wanted to ask for your forgiveness on the way that I, sometimes I could be right, but be wrong in being right. Um, and the way that I went about it, I just wanted to publicly apologize to you. I said, if you don't have that joy today, if you don't have that freedom, it's time to get it back. And all we got to do is get right with God, get right with each other. You know, this is Holy Week. Every day is Holy Week. Every week's Holy Week. Every day is Holy Day. But let's make this week our, up our minds to deal with some things. If you have people in your life that you need to get right with, don't come back next Sunday with a bunch of darkness in your life. Let's really celebrate resurrection. Amen. When it comes to Good Friday, let's really celebrate what Jesus did on the cross by applying what he did into our lives. Amen. So I encourage you today, start today. If you need some inner healing, get connected. Make sure you get that. 
Let's get free, like really free, amen? So, Father, I just thank you, Lord, for each and every person in this place. I thank you, Lord, for what you did on that cross. I thank you that you set us free. And I thank you, Lord, for the work that your word is doing by continuing setting us free until we're completely free indeed. And so, Lord, I just pray, God, that each person that you're convicting right now, that you would draw them forward to the altar, that they would confess what they need to confess. Just like Stephen humbled himself today, we pray, Lord, that each and every one of us would humble ourselves and get right with God and right with one another. We just thank you, Lord, for being forgiven. And we shout for joy. And we thank you, Lord God, for what you have done. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. I encourage you to come to the altar for prayer. God bless you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the service and you want to learn more about the ministry, head over to the website at praisetabernacle.church where you can learn about all the ministries Praise has to offer. Find devotional content, weekly newsletters from the pastors, and much more. We hope to see you soon right here at Praise Tabernacle because we are people restored and inspired serving everywhere.